nobody knew that this was something possible. And the technology that I'm talking about is keystroke dynamics or typing biometrics, meaning recognizing people based on how they type. Um, if I were to, to break down the, the, the solution in, into four easy and quick to understand steps, at first we record the behavior uh, of the typing, then we send that behavior to a cloud where the features are extracted, and this is a very important step, so step number two, the, the feature extraction, where we look at those traits that are very static throughout the person's lifetime, we push those uh, features through our machine learning algorithm, and then at the end, we give out a risk score, which generally feeds into a uh, risk engine, or it can be simply used as an authentication mechanism. Strong customer authentication regulation says you need two other three elements, right? And the three elements are knowledge, possession, and inheritance, right? Something only you know, something only you have, or something only you are and you need to tie two of these factors together in order to have what we call strong customer authentication. Now, the framework um, of, for in inherent uh, elements was a bit unclear. So last year in the summer, I think in, in June, uh, the EBA published uh, an opinion where uh, they complete and sort of go through what they understand through each of the authentication elements, including inherence. And as we see, for inherence element, we have keystroke dynamics, retina and iris scanning, fingerprint scanning. So all, all the, 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 the inherence elements that we too consider inherence elements, the ones that are important for the technology that we provide is keystroke dynamics, which is key press, key release times. And the last part, uh, the angle at which the PSU holds the device, right? So I mentioned the accelerometer and gyroscope, that's exactly that. So these are the two elements that we provide. Uh, for, for desktop, we just do keystroke dynamics, but for mobile devices, we do both keystroke dynamics and the angle at which the PSU holds the device. So what we propose and the easiest solution, which we believe will take over most of the authentication space, is tying a knowledge element to an inherence element. And people generally have run away from, from the knowledge element, and now we are seeing, at least in the US and Western Europe, a return of the knowledge element paired with behavioral biometrics. And the way you can do it is you run uh, typing biometrics either on username and password or a, a PIN or some, some secret words that only the user gets to know. So this is sort of the way that we imagine this to, to be happening. You look at the way the user types the knowledge element, and what you do in essence is from the user's perspective, there's only one authentication stage, right? But from your perspective, you have the knowledge element and the inherence element both at the same time. What all our solutions that we have had so far have in common is they have this structure. There are two phases when rolling out any authentication technology. There's the zero to one phase and the one to 100 phase, right? The zero to one, let's call it the POC. The, wh what's required for a POC is it needs to be cost effective. It needs to be non-disruptive for the current, uh, both for your uh, workforce and for for your customers, and it needs to be a valid testing methodology. You can't test, if, if you do a POC that's not relevant, it's useless, right? And the beauty here is, and this is the novelty with behavioral biometrics when comparing to, to other um, biometrics or other authentication systems, is that behavioral biometrics can run silent. And this is exactly what we propose when talking to our customers, and this is exactly what has been the most successful way of doing things. So you just select a small batch of users, you still keep in place the normal authentication framework that you had in the past, you just run typing DNA silently on the user credentials of a small population, and that's it. 
the users don't have any disruption in their behavior, but you get valid testing samples and data. And se the second stage where it becomes challenging over time to, to maintain something is the full rollout, right? The, what we call the one to 100. And for this, any authentication needs, the solution needs to be scalable, versatile, and flexible. And here again, behavioral biometrics as an AI-based solution has this beauty of being centralized, cloud-based, and device agnostic. So once you push it out there, it's really hard to have any challenges in terms of making sure it scales properly or maintaining it. It's centralized, so you, once you use it in one application, you can use it across applications. It's device agnostic, so it can be used on any device. It, it, you don't have a challenge with users changing their phones or changing the hardware that they're using because you already know how you're expecting them to type on that. And of course, the flexibility that you gain from a, a cloud-based solution that you can scale it whenever you want is an added bonus. So if, like five points on what's important for a POC, always determine first the channel that you need. Uh, this is very important because people want to run it everywhere. We recommend choose a channel, stick with it, let's try it there. Determine the user sample size. Uh, as a rule of thumb, 1% of the entire population is more than enough to create relevant data. Uh, keep the current authentication status quo, as I said. Just run typing DNA silently on that. The period you should expect for this, for a successful POC, is somewhere between two and four months, depending on the number of iterations, because it's AI, so you can always play with it, you can always adjust it, and we provide advice for that, and then you evaluate the results. 